What's up YouTubers, it's Dansky and in this tutorial we're going to be taking a quick look at Adobe's new program, that's Adobe Experience Design CC. Now this released very recently and it's tailored towards uh, anything to do with kind of app design, responsive design for the web, wireframing, prototyping, UI, UX. This is catered for those types of people that are looking for that. Uh, which actually is myself so this is brilliant this is a very early build it is the preview build at the moment and they are going to be adding more and more features over the coming months uh, they've released the mac version at the minute a windows version is coming later this year so let's jump in and take a look so i've opened up experience design cc and first you're presented with all these different popular screen sizes so you've got plenty of different devices iPhones Android we've got iPads Android tablet we've got some very popular web sizes including uh, of course 1080p and you can enter your own custom size if you like but for this video we're just going to go with the iPhone 6 so I've got that selected here and I'm just going to click the plus symbol and there we go it's created an artboard for us now the UI itself is very basic we've got our arrow tool and if you're familiar with programs like Photoshop and Illustrator, then for most of this, you're going to feel right at home. So we've got our arrow tool, we have the rectangle tool, the ellipse tool that allows us to draw rounded shapes like circles or ovals or ellipses, the line tool, the pen tool that some of you may be familiar with, the text tool, and the artboard tool. So let's just start using some of these. So drawing the rectangle, you just left click and hold down and it will help you draw a four-sided shape and as with Illustrator you can adjust the size of this shape you can change the border color over here so we'll just make that orange and you can increase the weight so let's say 10 now with the newer versions of Adobe Illustrator CC I've talked about this feature before they've included this in experience design which is great just inside of the outside anchor points you have these other little ones here the little circles if you click and drag that it will round the corners for you it's a very quick way of rounding off things like buttons and shapes or you can specify the radius over here on the right so if I go back to 10 and click enter it will adjust the radius and again you've got the width the height of this shape you've got the X and the Y position so that is uh, the horizontal and the vertical axes so if I set this up here you can see it's zero if I click 30 on the X and press enter it will knock it in from the left 30 and then if I click 30 it's the Y axis it will knock it down 30 so it's a very good way of precisely positioning your shapes and you can also specify a rotation here so let's go 45 or as within Illustrator as well you can just hover over this corner point until you see the rotate symbol and then rotate as you need to. And you can also hold shift to rotate in set increments. And of course you can adjust the fill. And you can select these little eye colors here and what it will do is it will hide or show your fill or your stroke and you can adjust your opacity. So that's your transparency. For the shape and lastly on this right hand side you can add a shadow so if we just pick or we'll pick a black shadow I think rather than picking some color this shape looks awful enough as it is so we've added a shadow and then you can just adjust the X the Y which is your, your shadow offset so if, let's do 10 it will offset it 10 to the right and it will offset it 10 below and then the blur the B stands for blur, so if we set that as 1, it's quite a hard shadow. If we set it at 10, it's going to be very soft. If we set it at 30, it's going to be very soft. So these are all your different options. And as with Illustrator as well, I'm going to be making this comparison quite a lot. Um, let's just add another shape and create a fill. And we can just hold Alt and drag to create a copy. We'll make this shape a different color. And as with Illustrator, if you have two shapes and one shape is on top, so in this case the yellow shape, you have the 
Pathfinder tools up here. Now there's only four, but to be honest, these are the four main ones that I use in Illustrator. So you've got Add, which is also known as Unite, and Subtract, which is also known as Minus Front. You've got Intersect, and you've got Exclude Overlap. I don't really use these two on the end so much, but these ones on the left, Add and Subtract, will help be really good for creating basic shapes. So we've got both of these two selected. Let's just click Add. Boom, they become one shape. Let's undo that and try again with Subtract. And it takes the yellow one on top out of the red shape. So you can use this to create icons and all sorts of things to use in your, uh, in your app UI design. And we've got the circle tool, very similar set of options to, uh, to the rectangle tool. And you'll notice that as I drag around, you'll see it automatically has these very similar style smart guides that snap everything in place. We've got our pen tool that we can left click and effectively create a dot to dot. Or we can click and drag and here it will automatically try to complete that curve. If we don't want to complete that curve, we just hold down Alt. Uh, no, that doesn't work in, in the experience design. Interesting. Okay, so there's no way to stop it forcing a curve. If anyone does know how to do that, please definitely let me and everyone else know in the comments. That would be super. But similarly, you can add colors to a completed shape. So very similar to the, the square, or the rectangle and the ellipse tool, but just kind of creating a, a, your own shape effectively. The line tool, that's very similar as well. Sorry, I appreciate we're jumping around a bit here, but it's very straightforward. You know, if you've used Photoshop and more, in particular Illustrator, you'll feel right at home here. You know, you can adjust the width of lines. You can adjust the color of a line. And we've got our text tool and we can click, enter some text. And then you've got a whole bunch of options on the right. And this is, for the most part, a lot of what you'll need to create kind of wireframes and, and some sort of very basic app designs. You can select your font, font size, font weight. So whether it's regular, bold, italic, you can choose your alignment. So you may have it to the left or centrally aligned or right aligned. This is going to be your character spacing. So the space between each of the letters. So let's enter that as 20, let's say 200. There you go, you get a better of idea what that does. If I go a thousand, it will space the letters especially far apart. So all very basic, but more than enough to mock up wireframes and some basic, uh, basic UI designs. And here we've got the artboard tool, last but not least. And you can click and drag your own custom size. Or you can see here those guides again being really helpful, just making sure that everything is lined up. So I can just create the shape. And then I can just pick. So we'll go for an iPhone 6 Plus. Oh, and it adds a new shape. There we go. So let's get rid of that one. Just select the artboard and then hit delete or backspace. And we've got our iPhone 6 Plus. And then if I did want an iPhone 5 one, I can just click that as well. Ooh. There we go. Make sure I move it with the arrow tool. And it's spaced them apart nicely as well. Lovely. And then this is the design stage. You can switch to prototyping, which allows you to specify a home page. And then depending on the journey from one page to the next to the next, you can click and drag and just join these pages like so. And then I could drag this one. So this one goes back around to this one. <laughs> so it gets very, uh, it can get very complicated with lots of wires going all over the place and everything, but it's very easy to link one page to another and totally spec out a whole user journey from start to finish. And then you can export it so people can actually view it and kind of experience the app or the website as it's intended to be. Okay, and there we go. That's a, a brief introduction to Adobe Experience Design CC. 
As always guys, leave any questions or comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time. Thank you.